I met you for the first time on my first day at work, and I realized at once you were everything I'd ever wanted in a woman. Gorgeous, stunning, assertive, and strong-willed. A woman who didn't take no from anyone. You were everything in the world to me, and I had to sit there and watch every day as you grew into the woman you are now. I've waited for years now, years of torment, watching you complain to me about the guys you've dated, telling me about how they treated you, how they've abandoned you the first chance they get. It's funny because the person who would never treat you like that was standing in front of you all along. I've been right here, telling you how these men are no good for you, telling you to look for someone who would treat you like a queen. And now, after all these years, you've lost me as well. I don't think you deserve my love anymore, not after dragging me along for so long. Instead, I've convinced myself, no, I know that you want someone to treat you like the slut that you are, to dominate you, to control you, to pull your hair and make you scream out over and over again in fear and lust. I will be that man for you, I promise. It's everything you've always wanted, right? It started off as an innocent work day. I'd memorized your patterns by now. Where you go in your free time, the friends you hang out with, where you go after work. I have to constantly be watching you after all. Don't want you to be running off now. You're so beautiful that men would constantly be trying to attack you. I'm your savior, here to make sure you're all right. You were telling me about the guy you went on a date with last night, how he didn't bother paying for the bill, didn't open the door for you, how he had sex with you and didn't even really say goodbye after. I nodded, listening like I always did, thinking about how none of it made any sense. Was I just a friend to you? Constantly the person you talk to, but never the one you want to be with? I had installed a microphone in the stall you always go to at work, just to make sure you weren't hiding anything from me. It was always fun to listen to, and when I saw you get up with your friend, I headed to the bathroom as well. I plugged my headphones in and listened, and heard the most despicable thing I've ever heard. Your friend, or colleague, was asking you why you told me these things. I was a guy and would never understand. You told her I'd always be there for you and understood things about you no one ever would. It was like I knew things about you that you'd never even told me. That was all fine. I already knew all that. Then she giggled and asked why you were stringing me along when I was clearly desperate for your affections desperate for you to be with me. Instead of laughing it off, you told her that you would never be with me. We weren't compatible in that way, and you only saw me as a friend. I was shaking in my own stall, unable to take it. I collapsed onto the ground, my heart pounding. I tore the headphones from my ears, not wanting to hear anymore. I had spent years, years of my life being there for you, trying to make you happy. I single-handedly destroyed all your enemies so you could be the woman you became today. Why did you think you were so successful? Why did you think all your competitors disappeared off the face of the earth when it was the most convenient for you? You are a terrible, terrible woman, using men to your advantage, making them work for you, and pretending that you would someday be with them. Enough was enough. I would finally be standing up for myself. 
to let you know how I had been feeling all these years, and what a despicable bitch you were. I followed you home today, like I always did, but instead of looking out for enemies that could be coming after you, I was the one that was coming after you today. I had years of practice, and you paid me no mind as I stood a few rows back on the bus, watching you. I followed you off of your bus stop, and we walked together towards your house. I would only have a few moments before you would be at home, safe from my grasp, and I would lose my momentum for today. I didn't let myself overthink it, I cleared my throat behind you, making my presence known right before you brought the keys out to your loft. <coughs> you turned back at once, confused. You asked me what I was doing there, and made a comment about how I lived on the other side of the city. I told you I was here to meet a friend, a complete lie of course. You nodded, but looked at me cynically. Before you could overthink it though, I bashed you over the head with the rock I was holding, and I could see your eyes fade away as you lost consciousness, plopping into your arms exactly where you belonged. You woke up a few hours later on your bed, groaning as you tried to touch your swollen head. There was some dried blood still caked on you, but I would be cleaning it off for you a bit later. Don't worry. As soon as the realization hit you, your eyes widened, and you began to scream, cursing at me, telling me to get you out of your damn bonds. I couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs> you look so cute, tied up in your bed like that, trying to escape, but completely unable to. It was so different from how you usually were. Composed, lovely, in charge, and the center of attention in every room. Do you not want to spend time with me? I asked, looking a little upset. You ignored me and continued screaming, telling me you are going to call the cops. That wouldn't do, would it? You're making me want to keep you here, forever, or you won't be harmed from society, from men who don't care about you, who leave you as soon as you give them what they want. No, I will be here always watching you, always giving your body what you desire. You'll never be hurt again. I decided at that very moment, leaning over your body, staring into your eyes, that that would be the case. I would keep you here, in your own apartment, forever. I told you so, not wanting to keep secrets between us, especially now that you've seen this side of me. You spit on me, anger fuming in your eyes, telling me I was a psychopath and that you should have been suspicious of me all along. I was honestly surprised a smart woman like you hadn't figured it out, how much I adore you. I wiped your spit from my face and climbed on top of you, pressing your wrists down against the bed, the fear in your eyes as you looked up to me was completely and utterly delicious. I found myself needing more of it, craving it. It was the first time you'd ever looked at me that way, really looked at me, without another man in your thoughts. It was addictive. I pressed my face close to you, so close to you that we were almost touching and smelled your perfume on your body, mixed with sweat and blood and tears. <sighs> Everything about you was intoxicating. You were shaking underneath me, and I could feel your heart pounding away as I took in all the sensations, knowing I would dream about it tonight. I didn't want to break you in too quickly. And when I knew I had finally shut you up, I left from your body, my lips grazing against yours only slightly as I did. I would be taking my time with you, savoring you, 
breaking you piece by piece as you've done with me all these years. I was now a monster, a monster stalking his prey, and I wouldn't be eating you all at once. I would take my time and save her every bit of your emotions, your smells, your skin. Yes, you were the woman for me. I knew that now. I turned to you and told you again that we would be here together forever. This time, I think you really believed my words. Tears were rolling down from your eyes as you squirmed against your bonds feebly. I told you I loved you, then walked away without turning back, locking the door to your apartment just to make sure you would never get out alive.